Hey, fellow squad mates. I am so excited to share with you all that the Multiplayer Gaming Podcast now has a live Patreon page. We run this podcast independently, and this is a great way for you guys to come support the show. That way we can keep delivering to you all two podcasts per week. In addition to supporting the show, you'll also get access to our exclusive Discord server where you can come interact and play games with Todd, Josh, and I, and also offer recommendations and to submit questions for future shows. You can find a link to our Patreon in the episode description, or you can visit www.multiplayersquad.com. Thanks so much to all of you for listening and subscribing. Now on to the show. Welcome to the Multiplayer Video Game Podcast. It's finally here. The next-gen consoles and the next-gen games. Tonight, we're going to dive into the future by, by going 40 years in the past. <laughs> and we are talking about Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. This is the sixth installment of the Black Ops series and 17th installment of overall Call of Duty games. Dang. Wow. It's a direct sequel to Call of Duty Black Ops, the original in 2010, and a prequel to Black Ops 2. We're just smack dab in the middle. Yeah, Black Ops Cold War is set during the 1980s, during the Cold War. It's my time, baby. <laughs> That's when Josh was at his prime. It That's is, when he peaked. It's, you know, <laughs> Josh peaked I, in the I, 80s. Without saying my age, let's just say I grew up in the 80s, all right? so Oh, man. So if you're new to the podcast, on today's episode, we're going to start with a brief overview of the game, a deep dive into some of the mechanics, touch on some funny stories, then we'll jump in and see what the community thought of the game, play Make Love, Marry, or Murder, then head to the leaderboard to close out the episode. And I'm not here alone. I'm here with my CIA operative, Paul. The knock list is in the open. I repeat, the knock list is in the open. No, no idea. I, no idea. I don't get no that. No idea. What you're oh. I, was gonna, I was like, please don't know what this one is, Todd, because then I'm going to feel dumb. Mission Impossible. <laughs> the knock list gets stolen oh, from the oh. CIA. Oh. Okay. All right. Okay. And the reason he didn't know is because he's from the KGB, Josh. Privit moyam trusiam. That is actually okay, you Russian. Were practicing, you were practicing that all pre-episode. Hey, hey. What does it mean? Uh, the, our Russian listeners will know what it means, and then they'll be like, yeah! <laughs> it, it's actually, hello, my friends, in Russian. Oh. Which I feel like is a Russian thing to say. But it's you, you would think it'd be comrades, right? But no, because we're American, that's what we think of Russians. But it's actually druzyam. Right. Well, it sounded threatening. See? Exactly. <laughs> but I was really being super nice. So. <laughs> I, think, I think, is there anything in Russian that actually sounds, like, friendly? I don't think so. I Probably don't not. think so. No. Yeah. What about vodka? <laughs> <laughs> Um, All right, to start off this episode, we're not going to be talking about Call of Duty. We're going to be talking about our giveaway. We we finally have a winner for our Patreon giveaway for the Azron keypad. Well, we're about to have a winner. I I have their names here in a wheel, and we're going to spin it, and we're going to find out live on the show who's winning this keypad. Uh, Is his name Josh? No, we Dang are it. not eligible Dang for it. this. Only Patreon supporters. Who comes up with the rules for this podcast, man? This sucks. I believe it's a two-thirds majority oh, vote between the three right. of us. All right. Well, I had, oh, that was okay. not my vote. I vote that we can win. That was easy. <laughs> Josh, come on. <laughs> All right, Todd. <laughs> well, well lucky, lucky for our <laughs> listeners, I'm the one in control of the wheel, so. <laughs> I thought we found Paul's a loophole. a bully. No, no. All right. Well, are you guys ready? Should we yeah. figure out who the winner is? Well, should we announce what it is first? I mean, what what is an Azeron keypad after all? It's a PC keypad with like a, a joystick on it and like, you know, strategically placed um, buttons so your fingers can click different switches that are bound to actions in a game. It's rated at $150. 
MSRP. It looks like the severed hand of a Terminator. It's like yes. straight up sci-fi from the future. Yeah. So if you happen to win this and you don't have a computer, just hang it on your <laughs> wall. It, it'll still look super cool. It'll be a piece of art. You can put yeah. it on your dinner table. It's a conversation starter. That's just for sure. be like, just tell like your parents or your friends, be like, look what I dug up in my backyard. Like, what do you guys think this is? And they'll be like, dude, that's it's a cyborg. From the man. Future. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, here goes. I'm going to spin the wheel. Oh, man. All right. No whammies. No whammies. <laughs> I am Peter Parker. Oh, wait. Are you? <gasps> You're Spider-Man, Paul? <laughs> Oops. Who knew? I didn't mean to tell you. No, no, no. You Patreon supporter, I am Peter Parker. Congratulations. You're now the proud owner of a new Azeron gaming pad. That is awesome. Congrats, I am Peter Parker. Thank you for the support and everybody on our Patreon. Uh, sorry it wasn't your lucky day. It was I am Peter Parker's lucky day. I seem to remember playing some Warzone with him. I, I remember him being a good sniper. So that's fine. Be even better now with this keypad. Yeah. So it's true. He'll have, he'll have quicker, <laughs> quicker access to all those hotkeys. All right, let's jump in to Call of Duty: Black Ops Cold War. All right, guys, I I did a brief description of like a little bit of the history of the game and that what is a call of duty game at the very basic level oh i know this one now i know i, I, I love the fact that i can legitimately <laughs> talk about call of duty and know what I'm this talking was your about. first call of duty game. this is for those that may not know this is the first call of duty game that i have ever purchased and ever played other than warzone i did jump on to warzone when it came out it's a it's a it's a game it's a it's a shoot 'em up. It's a shooting up game, as we used to say back in my day, you know? in the eighties. <laughs> no, it's uh, I mean, it's a first person shooter. It is uh, very fast paced. There's a lot to do. I mean, these games, from what I understand, usually have a campaign. Uh, this one had a campaign. I played the whole thing, so I can talk about that. Um, multiplayer is generally the reason that people buy Call of Duty games. Um, I now see why. Uh, so we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, the infamous zombies mode I have seen before, but never really understood what was going on. Uh, and so they've got that mode as well. But it's, I mean, it's a little bit of everything, but primarily you buy this to just merc people in multiplayer. Yeah, absolutely. I would say Call of Duty is probably the pinnacle of first-person shooters, right? When you think FPS, don't you normally first think of Call of Duty? Or Halo. <laughs> or Overwatch. <laughs> or uh, Overwatch. Yeah. Or, you know, no, other I think fantastic first-person shooters. I'll agree shooters. with what Paul's saying. It is it is the most genuinely pure, pure first-person shooter. Yeah, exactly. All right. And then this game is on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation with full cross play and cross save. Let's jump into the graphics for this game. They're good. I thought the graphics are pretty incredible in this game and what really struck struck out what really stuck out to me <laughs> were the colors. Like this is a very colorful game. I'm kind of mm -hmm. used to playing more of the Battlefield games, which can g be very drab. It almost reminds me of like PUBG when it came out, where everything is either yeah. a green or a brown, and it's a mix of all of those. It's been a little while since I've played Call of Duty. I don't even re remember which one. It was the one that had Kevin Spacey, but that was the last one I had played. It was a long time ago. And this one, the colors are super striking, especially on my ips monitor it looks gorgeous yeah that was the first like i i'm one of the lucky few i managed to to land uh, a 3080 graphics card so i'm playing this thing as wide open as you can play it and this is the first game that i have played with that card that can just push everything wide open my first experience with ray tracing you know, DLSS, like all this super cool new technology. Call of Duty has all that stuff. And I was blown away. Like all of the levels the first time I saw them, I was like, these graphics with like the action that's going on, 
is insane to me. It is a beautiful game. Yeah. And you know, Josh, I'm I, I don't I have a twenty eighty, so I'm I'm not up there in the three thousand. But <laughs> this is this is the first game where I felt like I got my ray tracing. Like I didn't play Tomb Raider, I didn't play some of those early ones that like, you know, were the first ones to get ray tracing. But like this is the first one where it's like, oh, I'm buying this no matter what. Oh, and it has ray tracing, and it's beautiful. It's pretty incredible. It, yeah, I've there. I've actually like just stood there and like looked around for a little bit to see all the different reflections and what ray tracing does until some guy is like headshots me and he's like, look, look, <laughs> look at that idiot standing still. <laughs> and I was like, I was trying to enjoy the scenery. But yeah, Todd Josh shed a is, tear Josh over the ray tracing. Stinking Francis Scott Key, like <laughs> seeing the bombs go off and writing a poem. <laughs> yeah, um, the graphics are so great, and I love the set pieces. So I feel like that really makes the graphics shine because you'll have a, a level called Satellite, which is out in the desert, and you get to see the cliffs and the sun and the sky. But then other missions are out on the sea, like Armada, where you get these giant battleships and you have all of these boats that can drive around and so i really feel like they did a good job getting a lot of different set pieces that really let those graphics shine and come through one thing i love about cold war is like just the variety of maps the variety is really good there's snow maps there's desert maps there's ocean maps there's city maps but the kind of like what you were talking about paul the color palette is so different on every map that it's yeah. it really does they each stand out like a lot like there's even nighttime miami so it's a bunch of neon that's glowing and stuff and it's just they did a very good job with the colors in each map to make each map have its own feel but also its own like unique look which is really cool yeah and then so moving on from graphics a little bit what about the sound like i know you know, most video games, it's like, okay, like, you know, it's multiplayer, there's some sound, but this one, I feel like there's a lot of different perks that rely on sound, or like, you know, there are devices you can throw down that pick up sound and like help displays it on the map. Like, how'd you guys just find the the audio quality and like the, the sound effects in this? I think they're really good. Um, I've always been a big proponent of having like have a good gaming headset or have a good headset for surround sound, especially if you're playing and you're really into like first person shooters. But this game, the footsteps are are clear. I mean, you can tell where people are, but there's little things that I really like, like hearing shells from a gun hit the ground. Like if you hop onto like a mounted machine gun and you start firing it, you'll hear the shells just pinging off the off the cement under you, which I thought was like super cool. But then I noticed like on that desert map that we were talking about, you have these little like caves that you can run through. And I don't know if you guys have ever noticed this, but if you shoot in those caves, you it echoes like off of the cave walls. So it actually accounts for like the acoustics of where you're actually standing, which is really cool. Like I've noticed gunfire sounds very different in a small room than it does if you're like out in the open or if you're in those caves and stuff. So I think the I think the sound is great. Yeah, I completely agree. And sound is tantamount in playing this game. I can't imagine playing this through through speakers. You have to have a headset. That way you can hear exactly where people are. It does make it tough when we play in groups because we'll all be in Discord, but I keep my in-game volume pretty high. Because you want to be able to hear when someone's coming around that corner, and that way you know exactly when to open fire and land those headshots first. But there's also other things like in line with what you're saying, Josh, the radar jammers that people can place as a score streak, you can actually hear those devices. As you get closer, the hum from those become louder. So you can actually use that to your advantage to go find it. It's almost like playing hot and cold. You know, you can tell where that device is. That way you can destroy it and get your radar back. So they really did a very good job with implementing the sound. It sounds great. It's part of the strategy. It's definitely key to how you play Call of Duty. And they did a fantastic job. What's funny, too, is, I mean, I guess I've never noticed it, but I know Warzone gets a lot of flack for not having great sound to it. 
Um, I've watched a lot of streams and some some pros play it and stuff like that, and a lot of them complain about the sound in that game, where it's like I didn't hear footsteps, or you know, there's just it, the sound cuts out for a second. And I haven't noticed any of that in in Cold War. Um, like I said, maybe I'm just less sensitive to it in Warzone than some people are because I'm not. I don't play at that high of a level either. But I I have I have not experienced any issues at all in Cold War. Have you ever? sat there and just listened josh that's what i want to know you sat there and stared at the water i what i like to do is run right into the middle of the street in miami and just close my eyes and listen to the hum of the the neon lights glowing until somebody shoots me in the face and then i just you know (laughs) run right back out there again well you got to appreciate the sound the sound as that bullet goes through the bone. You <laughs> the can sound really of my head exploding it. is just <laughs> <laughs> It's crystal clear HD sound. I will say this. Uh one of the things that stood out to me in the very beginning is the menus have some super cool music. I remember waiting in like the queue and I think it was the multiplayer menu. And I just started like jamming to the song that was playing, and it was like, dude, this is this is pretty good. I when I first loaded the game, it wasn't like a jamming song. It was like a a Russian anthem, like I don't know, yeah. like anthem. Yeah, and it was just yeah. like Wait, this you guys don't big, jam to Russian like, anthems. Yeah. What's what's my bad? It's really I forgot who we were talking to. <laughs> yeah, I remember joking that it made me want to go pour go to, a I, vodka because it really gets you in that Russian spirit uh, as soon as you <laughs> you hear that music. That was a that was a good pun yep, there, yep, Russian yep. spirit. You know what I was doing there. Oh. Uh, yeah. All right. How's how's the gameplay? How's how's the the jumping, the sliding, the I don't know, the actions like it, it, it matters. I think it's the most important. It is. Absolutely. We I mean we talk about graphics and sound, but if the gameplay sucks, ain't nobody playing your game for very long. Yeah, the gameplay is very fast. Like this game is not good if you have slow reflexes. So it's very fast paced. You are constantly moving. You do sprint and slide and you have to very quickly notice what's going on around you. And then normally, if you're the first to notice the enemy, you're probably going to win 90% of those battles. So it's definitely very fast paced. Yeah, I I'll say this. I didn't like this game when I first started playing it. Because I was just getting murdered. I mean, it was, I think, our first team deathmatch. And I was like, oh, cool, deathmatch. I know how this works. And I was just, I knew that Call of Duties were fast paced. So I was just full sprinting everywhere I could go and then just getting just ganked from the side, like every which direction. I think I went like, three and 24 or just something (laughs) terrible like the first match i played and i remember thinking like this game sucks man like like, (laughs) this is terrible and then somebody was like hey don't go like charging through the middle of the map like actually like slow down a little bit watch sight lines you know apparently camping is a big thing in call of duties and they were like people hate it but camping is also very effective so that's why people do it and so i just i quit like mad olympic sprinting around the map and then things started getting better right away so yeah it's not as slow as like rainbow six siege like it's but you have to take your time a little bit like all all the characters and the movement and the time to kill like it's really fast but you need to slow down a little bit and check all your angles or else you're just going to get sideswiped. And like every time you don't pay attention to the door behind you, even though no one should be there, that's when someone runs up through that door and takes you out. That's a great point. And the gameplay also really requires that you know the levels. So the first time that we would play those levels like Miami, you might just start running down the middle of the street and you don't realize exactly how vulnerable you are from every angle. And as you get to learn the game, you kind of know, okay, people love to hold this hallway in this building, and that room has a balcony that overlooks the, the main street. And as you get to learn all of that together, I do find that the gameplay does become more enjoyable, but it does require that you learn a base level of information first. 
Yeah, I mean, at its heart and soul, it's a shooter. So if you're not good at quickly aiming at people, you know, and and you know you're gonna die. I mean, that's ultimately what this game is about: is kill the opponents. You know, there is a ton of different modes that I'm sure we'll get into um, in multiplayer. But I, like I said, it is the most pure first person shooter type game. But yeah, I, I mean, the the speed it takes it definitely takes some getting used to the speed of it for me. Like I noticed the first round that I play, I suck like every single time the first round I play, I'm terrible. And then my brain starts like moving quicker and like waking up and, you know, I get warmed up and then things start getting better after that. But it definitely takes a little bit of getting used to. Well, and with Warzone, you have armor. So like you can survive a little bit. But in this, it's like Warzone without armor. Like you die quick. Like, that is one thing. Like, the time to kill in this game is very, very low. Which which is really weird to me because I was reading some of the reviews on it, and people were complaining that the time to kill, like, it took longer to kill people in Cold War than it did in, I guess, Modern War. Like I said, I haven't played these other games, but I, I heard people complaining that they actually made it a longer time to kill for Cold War, which some people didn't like. And I was like... I I die in like a quarter of a second. <laughs> like how yeah. much faster can it get? Yeah, if I pop a burst fire M16 on someone's head, they're gonna die. If you snipe one click, one kill, yeah, it's it's a pretty fast time to kill. It, there's no getting shot in the back, turning around, and then killing the other guy. Yeah. And I get shot in the back a lot. There's some very dishonorable people out there, I'll just say that. <laughs> You also walk backwards most of the time. It, it, it's good for the calves. Probably. That's the weirdest response. <laughs> I mean, um, all right. Uh, moving on the game modes. Let's let's start with the campaign mode. Like, how was that for you guys? Now I beat the campaign. So I How long did it take you? It's like six hours. It's it's short, man. It's really not it's that short. long. Yeah. So this was also my first Call of Duty campaign. Um I thought it was good. I mean it's it's very adequate. The fact that they throw it in there is great. I mean, like I said, you're buying this game to play multiplayer, but the fact that I got a six hour like CIA, CIA Russian Cold War I mean, there's a plot there somewhere. Oh, I love the plot. The plot is hysterical. <laughs> I mean, yes, it's <laughs> so just briefly. The plot of this game. Just okay, all right. No spoilers. spoilers. Yeah, no spoilers. No, no spoilers. No, <laughs> yeah. no. And this is okay. stuff that's in the trailers too. Okay. So basically, you have this guy named Perseus who is involved with all of these major things in the movement of communism, and so they talk about how the nuclear bomb plans from the Manhattan Project got stolen. Well, that was Perseus. You have the attempt of a theft of nuclear weapons in Vietnam, and that was Perseus. And so basically, you have Ronald Reagan coming in, telling the CIA, well, hey, now that we've had the Iranian hostage situation, we're just throwing all morality to the wind. You go do whatever you're going to do. There are no war crimes. And just go do what you need to do to go track down Perseus and protect democracy around the world. And so there might be some legal issues in this game, but you just get to run around at will and chase people through apartment buildings and throw them to their death after you interrogate them or whatever you want. You have in this the game. option. I was going to say, not Paul's do that, bloodthirsty. Paul. I yeah. see my guy. You that's, said, yeah. that's your first, that's your first like choice in the campaign. <laughs> I, just, I just knocked him out and tortured him. Like, <laughs> but like any, any decent, <laughs> like any person reasonable would. person. <laughs> and then the, like one of the first missions is also like this epic airplane chase where like, you have cars going everywhere. You're in a car. You're shooting other cars. They're flipping. It's like Fast and the Furious if I watched any of those movies. Um, <laughs> it's a Michael Bay dream. Yeah. 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 Really yeah. And that's so like if it, it's fun just being a part of something so over the top and so ridiculous with all these crazy things happening. And it's fun. 
like you get a beat in an action film. All right, moving on from the campaign, like, I mean, this is the meat and the potatoes. Multiplayer. Like, there's how many different modes inside of the, like, regular multiplayer mode? There's a ton, and I still confuse some of them. So it's like, wait, 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 <laughs> hard point? Is that the one where you have to stay in the zone, or is that the three points that you take? No, 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 that's control. There's domination, yeah. there's control, <laughs> and they have, like, similar names, right? Don't forget assault. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you have to, like, learn these. Some of them are a little more obvious, like search and destroy. Oh, okay, so it's the CSGO type mode or whatever, but... There are plenty of modes, and what I love is you can just uncheck the ones you don't like and just queue for quick play for the ones that you do, and I think that's great. I think my favorite, honestly, might be Kill Confirmed. I that's like where that you kill someone, and they drop their dog tag, and if you pick up their dog tag, you get a point, and that's all that matters. You can get 100 kills. If you don't grab any dog tags, you have zero points, Yeah, and so that one provides a little bit extra strategy of staying with your team. Also, you get to do a little more close quarter which I like, and so you, you you are able to play a lot of different ways. I like the fact, as I've always made it known that I, like, one of the reasons that I never got into Call of Duty was that I was a Battlefield guy, and so it's just, you don't have time for both, or I didn't have time for both anyway. And what I thought was really cool about this one, and I, I don't know if this exists in previous Call of Duty games, but they have your full multiplayer list, which is your smaller maps and your smaller teams and stuff, but then they have combined arms which gives you a much larger map, which gives you like five control points. And these are more akin to, they're not quite your battlefield maps. They're not that big because there's not, you know, you don't have people flying jets and helicopters and stuff, but they are larger maps that lend themselves to smaller, like snowmobiles and motorcycles and snipers. And then you have close quarters and it's just, it's much more of that battlefield feeling to me, which I'm real familiar with. And so I like that a lot. I like I love the fact that there's this combined arms maps and then there's the smaller just straight up multiplayer maps. And that's my favorite. The the 12B12 like that it it yeah, you're right. It reminds me of uh Battlefield and it also reminds me of Big Team Battle in Halo. Yeah. yeah. Where it's yeah, like it, just honestly, the, the larger a ton of people and what you can do is you can find your little corner what objective you maybe a couple friends want to do and like i remember one time i found like some choke point but then like 10 people ran through it like one after another after another after another after another and i was sitting there just like taking out people running down this hallway and it was hilarious and like you know josh and one of our friends freaked out and they're like todd you're doing great and it's like yeah, I'm just standing here shooting people, and it's great. <laughs> Fish in a barrel, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's what it felt like. As long as we can all agree that free-for-all is the worst mode, I do not care for free-for-all at all. I do don't you guys like, like that one? I mean, it's so no. chaotic. I've yes. legit only played it twice. In all of the... Because I've been playing a lot of Call of Duty lately, but I've only gotten that mode twice, and it's just filled with campers. Like, that's the one thing that bugs me is it's like when it's every man for themselves, like you don't have a team on this side and a team on this side. You just have guys that are hiding in corners like all over the map. And it's you you can't move without some dude in a corner just ganking you, man. So I, yeah. I'm with you. I don't like that mode. I, I mean, but I feel like that's true. Not like Call of Duty specific, but free for all in general. I don't like yeah, I like things that are team-based, and I especially like objective-based. Team Deathmatch is fine. I just personally prefer if you toss in some kind of objective, whether it's holding an area or attacking multiple points or whatever it might be. I, th those are my favorite for sure. Now, since we're talking about gameplay still and some of the different modes, is I'm having a lot of fun with this game. We'll rate it here in a little while. But am I the only one where this game is either on fire and i'm having just an absolute blast and i think this game is great and i feel like a boss and then other times where it is i am complete and total garbage i can't get a kill to save my life i am like two in 17 and i hate it with all of like the fiery depths <laughs> of my soul is that is that just me or is that like you guys too that is exactly what it's like for me. Is it? Okay, good. <laughs> I will play a game where I go 30 
and nine and I'll have the most points. And then all of a sudden we'll queue the next game and I'll, yeah, I remember Josh, we played a game. I think it was two nights ago and one of our teammates went six and 35 and you said, if I went six and 35, I would just uninstall this game. And I thought, I go six and 35, like every seven or eight games. That's when I was doing really good though, Paul. That like, was one of your good games. Good. And I was like, I'm not going to tell Josh, but I, I do that on the regular. Yeah. It's, it's a little bit luck of the drop, but we also have a couple friends who seem to be remarkably good at this game. Yeah. And I think when we queue with them, we're going against much better people. I definitely notice when I queue solo that everyone moves half as fast as they do when we queue <laughs> with our friends. Yeah. We had a friend the other day. What did he go? Like five and 60? No, he went 60 like and that? five. There's a big difference. There. Oh, sorry. sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> or actually it was yeah. 60 and nine. And it was funny too, because you could tell he was popping off. And then we were all just chatting away like we always do. We're playing this game. We're talking. And then, and then Jared just gets quiet. And then it's like, he's like seven, eight, 13, 14. He's going on this like major kill streak and he's just counting it out. And then he's just quiet. And then at the end of the map, he's like, Ooh, sorry about that, guys. Like, I had to, I had to really focus there, man. Like, I'm sweaty now. <laughs> but he did great. I was like, dang, dude, that's impressive. I, I feel like I go in between okay and bad. Like, I don't have maybe one out of every 20 games. I'll have like a, a beast mode game, but then I just go between doing fine and doing bad may i it, maybe i need more hours but you know halo is gonna come out soon right soon uh, yeah well this soon. game requires a lot of tinkering because you have to level up your guns so there's a lot of playing around with what gun am i going to use but then you have to use it enough to unlock attachments and so there's almost an infinite amount of tinkering to figure out what works for you and for your play style and if things aren't working well it might be counterintuitive, but you might find that you're doing surprisingly well with a burst fire tactical rifle instead of your SMG. So you definitely have to just switch things up if it's not working. The tinkering gets me. I love it. Honestly, like at the end of every match, you unlock something usually, you know, and it's like, ooh, ooh, I want to try that now. Like, let me put that on my gun. And then you occasionally you unlock a new gun and then it's like, oh, let me let me try that gun. I mean, there's and that's. Yeah, that's the whole progression system is you unlock different perks and like skins and different stuff like that, mainly through your your leveling of your character. And then for each gun, you have your own um, like weapon XP. attachments. Yeah, that you so yeah, so you need to uh, level up that weapon and then you can get attachments for that weapon. Very similar to Warzone. Yeah, and what really worked for me is I just noticed that I kept dying while reloading. And so early on, I was going basically all SMGs. And I ended up switching to the M16, and I unlocked the extended mag. I've got 45 bullets. That's 15 <laughs> burst fire clicks. So I never reload anymore. And it's so hard for me because just instinctively, I want to constantly reload after every time I shoot. But that's a great way to die in this game. So I learned stop reloading go with the tactical rifle, and now I find myself doing much better, and I never planned on using a burst fire gun. But that's what you get to tinker with, and it's very... It definitely keeps the game interesting because you can just totally switch up your play style. I do like and, that there's enough guns that there is a gun that fits you. Like, honestly, yeah. like I've been trying a lot of them. Some guns I, I don't like instantly, and I'm like, okay, I don't like this one for whatever reason. And then other guns just kind of click. And it's like, I don't know why I like this gun, but I'm doing good with it, and I'm going to stick with it and unlock a bunch of stuff for it. And uh, Yeah, I, I mean, I like the fact that there's a like a style of gun for, for everybody. And to rank up my gun, I don't play multiplayer. I, I play zombies, I, guys. I was going to say, you're always in zombies mode. I've played more zombies than both of you. And I love it. I I think it's so much fun. Like, so a brief overview, like you start on like a map, you have to kill the zombies to earn money, then you can use that money to open up different parts of the map, and then like there's this weird storyline where you can go into basically 
like the upside down world. It kind of seems like, and during all of this, there are rounds of zombies and every round zombies get harder to kill and there's more of them. So you need to upgrade your weapons. You need to upgrade your armor and health and all of these things. So you can keep on taking out the zombies. And it's, it's fun. Like for me, it's one of those things where like, you might have a bad game or two. Most of them are going to be like middle of the road, but then you're always trying to like beat yourself. Like you like do a little bit better than you did last time. You learned a little bit more and now you can go back in and do a little bit better. And then like you keep on just getting better and better and better at the game. And it is fun for you. Yeah. No, I mean- <laughs> Get out of here. Both of you. No, I like zombies. I just know how Paul feels about it. That's all. That's why I was laughing. I do enjoy zombies mode. I think it's a good change of pace for multiplayer. It's different enough that there, there's parts of it that interest me a lot and I want to play. I think that zombies is much more strategy based and teamwork oriented. So you have to go into it with that mindset of like, I almost say it's like a raid, right? Like you have to prep, you have to have a plan, you have to know what you're going to do, and everybody kind of has to work for the good of everybody. And if you don't, then it's just kind of bland and it's like you're just shooting zombies. And you're going to die. Right. And you're going to die die. like round 15. Right. But it's like there's just at that point, I think like you don't see a point in it. You're like, I'd rather just shoot real people like playing multiplayer than I would zombies. But if you can kind of embrace the strategy part of it then i i I mean i think there's a lot of fun to be had there but i get that it's it's very polarizing i guess for people yeah i don't actively dislike the zombie mode but for me i just don't really understand why for me i would just never play zombie mode i would just rather play multiplayer against other people I find the satisfaction of beating other people more fun than beating the zombies. And I think really my biggest issue with the zombie mode is just that the first 10 rounds are pretty slow. And every time you restart, you have to work through the opening stages until you get to where it's actually a challenge. And so I just find it not really personally worth it to go through that grind just to get to where it becomes interesting. And so I would rather pop into quick play. I can do an entire quick play match before I get to round 10 in zombie mode. Yeah. So what, like not just zombies, but multiplayer campaign, the whole game, what would you do to make this game better? Balance. Like, honestly, there's two guns right now that are just way OP. The MP5 and the M16 are just way stronger than every other gun out there. And when you're in a game that... I mean, I talked about the feel of the guns, and one of our friends is great with the M16. So like, I feel really good for him because he's doing very well with it, and it's making it fun. But at the same time, I'm like, dude, that gun's broken right now. You know? Yeah. like I have, to, I have to account for recoil, aim down sight time, you know, like pull the mouse down to, so that it doesn't drift and all that stuff. Like, you just have to click once and the burst fire three bullets just obliterates everybody that you, you look at, you know? So it's like that. And the MP5 is, it's a, it's an SMG. It shouldn't be able to take people out from 50 yards away. And yet it does, you know, that gun's too strong too. So for me, I, I mean, I think just weapon balance in general would fix a lot of the frustration that I have with it. I think a lot of people's assumptions are there's going to be a lot of balance changes on weapons going forward. I'm sure. And we'll see where certain seasons, certain guns will be in vogue and other ones will fall by the wayside. We've noticed a lot of shotguns lately. There were none the first couple days, really. And now I swear half the people are running around with shotguns. So I'm curious to see how that stuff changes. It, there is something satisfying about shotgunning somebody in this game. <laughs> well, and the sliding shotgun. Man, oh, that is yeah. in every multiplayer game with sliding. You just slide yeah. in and shotgun someone in the face, and it's so frustrating. All right, Paul, what about you? What was the question? What would you change? Um, oh, oh what would it? I change to make yeah. it better? Uh, Honestly, Nothing. I, I think it works really well for what it does. If you like first person shooters, I think you'll like it. I know people take issue comparing it to other Call of Duties, 
but it it just is what it is. It's a first person shooter. It looks good. It works well. I haven't really experienced any real glitches. I haven't seen very much hacking, although I've read about it. I think it's just a matter of playing it and learning what works for you. What about you, Todd? I know this is like counterintuitive for the game, but like if, if it was for me, what would I do? I would slow down time to kill. Like, it's just going from other games, like even Warzone, the time to kill is so dang fast. Like, compared to most other first person shooters that are kind of fast paced, where, where like you can run around, there's a lot of movement. Like in Rainbow Six, you it has a similar time to kill, but you creep around corners, like leaning to the side. This game, like, you can like you have to sprint and then if you sprint slightly too far so someone can see you like boom you're dead and like that can get a little frustrating and like you have to play the game a very specific way to do well in it and one of the ways is camping which i refuse to do good for you i get that too <laughs> i i mean I, I think that's a personal preference I it is. I am with yeah, you in that I like is. a longer time to kill. I I like that because it lends to more strategy than just technical ability, in my opinion. Like that's why I like Overwatch so much because the time to kill is really low in Overwatch. Low meaning it takes longer. I don't know what the what's the correct term for high time to kill? Does that mean it takes a long time? Or is a high time to kill meaning like it's very quick? <laughs> Like, I think it's short yeah. and long. Is it There's short no and long height to I, it? I've always heard a high and low. Yeah, time high to and kill. low. It's it's yeah the mm. number of seconds, right? So if it's high time to oh, kill, it's a okay. higher number of seconds to kill them. Okay, yeah. all right. So I'm a fan of high time to kill. <laughs> like like the cycle. <laughs> we just, you like yeah, it to yeah, be a little the, longer. The, the cycle, right? Yeah, yeah. Because I like the strategy aspect of of games. I'm you know, like I said, maybe it's just because I'm getting a little bit older. My reflexes aren't as great anymore. But I do. I feel you, Todd, in that frustration when you're just getting killed over and over and over again, and it's happening almost instantaneously. Well, and with with Overwatch, like I like Soldier. I'm a pretty good soldier, and I'm really good at tracking. So I can track while shooting soldier's gun. Tracking isn't as important in Call of Duty as much as, like, like twitch shooting, almost. Like, getting the crosshairs immediately over the person. Like, that matters more than, like, being able to track, almost. Yeah. All right. So that was our thoughts on the game. Paul... What did the community think? Yeah, I grabbed a couple of reviews here from Metacritic, since Cold War is through Battle.net. We, we don't have any Steam reviews, but I was able to find a couple here. So the first review that I found is a one-star review. Now remember, Ouch. this is one to ten. Oof. So one-star review. Unfortunately, it's a pure sweatiest. S S B M M and the crap ton of bugs make this game merely unplayable for me. COD is just no fun anymore. Boy, do I miss those good old days when you could just put the disc into the console and have fun. Now you have to always play the hardest you can and always use the best equipment. There is no diversity, etc. Uh maybe that guy's just too sweaty. You know? S S B M M is skill based matchmaking, right? Yes. Yes. So I don't get good, right? Uh, yeah. Or just I, it, it, nerf. It, Call of Duty by nature is competitive. You don't play it to play casually. If you want to play a casual game, that's fine. Go play Among Us or play Broforce or you know whatever you might want to do. But if you're playing Call of Duty, I think it's weird to criticize it by saying it's always sweaty. Like that's what it is. It's a it's a multiplayer game, yeah. you against the other guy, who's going to kill who. And I think it's b better for all players because you hate like if you're not good at the game and you're playing against insanely good people or even average people, like you're getting destroyed especially in a game like this that has a really low time to kill. 
feel like you have to have skill-based matchmaking to get people who aren't good at this game to continually play the game. All right, and now I have a nine-star review. This game is wonderful. Time to Kill is so good. The prestige system was so good for people who like this system to level up. The maps are playable, yet different from Modern Warfare 2019. So a little bit of a different take there. Now I have what is probably my favorite review. It's just a little bit longer, but it is a two-star review. And here's what he had to say. Campaign, very short, plus who cares? Zombies, who cares? <laughs> Multiplayer, here we go again. The thing that matters the most is, of course, the worst part about the game. If you enjoy going one for one almost every game due to strong SBMM, slow clunky mechanics, and weak sauce, boring weapons, all caps, that all perform the sa- all perform the same way, even when loaded with attachments, you will enjoy this pile of garbage, or at least sweat hard while doing it. <laughs> Weak sauce AF, getting my money back tomorrow's, so enjoy sweating all over each other, losers, probably just for a 1.4 KD to win-loss ratio. (laughs) Haha, pathetic, because I know in the end it won't be worth it, smiley face. Now I'm going to go back to 2015 and play a real Call of Duty. See ya. Okay. I'm learning that people take their Call of Duty very seriously. (laughs) That's a bonkers review. You know, yeah. I'll... I'll, uh... (laughs) I love the inflection on the big caps thing. That's what I'm saying. Like, this is one of the things about Warzone that I love just because I'm a troll. But, like, when you kill somebody in Warzone and you hear them scream over the voice oh, chat. in the open mic. It is that, so good. It, it, like, it just, I just get this warm, fuzzy feeling inside and just, a, like, a moment of glee. Because I know that guy is just absolutely raging that he died in a video game. Like, what? Like, come on, man. Like, and and I feel like there's people in Call of Duty that are like that, but then I get it, man. Uh, no lie. I played a match yesterday where the same guy killed me five times in a row. Literally the same guy five times in a row. He was, and I knew where he was on the map. And then I started going to that point on the map because I wanted to kill him. And then he just kept killing me. And I got ticked off man i was like i hate yeah. this guy You're like you kill me one more time you know and i just I, so i mean i i guess i understand part of it but they're video games people like you're supposed to play them and have fun yeah it can definitely bring out the aggressive side of people that's <laughs> josh you're not sure. sweaty enough i guess not. yeah uh, not sweaty enough and then finally i have an eight star review Rock solid campaign, multiplayer, and zombies. People will literally complain about anything and everything. Ignore all the crybabies. This is a good game. I recommend it to anyone. Maybe a little bit yep. more measured of a review than the previous I don't guy. Know. That guy sounds like he's how crazy many how many me. all caps words <laughs> yeah. did he have? That's uh, what I want to know. Zero, and it's all proper grammar, and he uses all the correct punctuation. Kudos to mm. that guy. All right, so this is on Metacritic. So we are going to guess what the average user score is. So not the critic score, but the user score. So it's a scale of 0.0 to 10.0. Where do you guys think the users landed on Black Ops Cold War? I'm going to say a 7.9. Okay. I'm going to... Say a dollar, Bob. No, um, I'm gonna go with uh, it's not eight point right two. Okay, I also wrote down eight point two. Oh, we're gonna share, but the winner is Josh yes! because what? the score is three point three on what? Metacritic. No, point- dude, I, what? that's so stupid, right? The point. I, this bugs me, man. Public service announcement: If you're going to review a game, it's so that people can actually get an idea of the game. You know, it's like that's the reason we do this podcast. We want people to get like an honest, like just from gamers to gamers idea of something. This whole review bombing thing is just stupid, man. There's no way this game is a 3.3. It's at least a 3.5. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's just stupid. I, I, I don't understand that, you know. All right, Josh, lead us oh. into the next 
Sexy, sexy right. segment. Wait, I got to look up how to say this in Russian real quick. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, I'll just go with the only Russian I know. Привет, моим друзьям. I don't know <laughs> what food you have in your mouth. <laughs> oh, boy. That was, uh, yeah. So... All right, so we're going to do Make Love, Marry Murder. This is how we like to rate our games that we talk about. Um, And I am going to... I mean, honestly, I'm going to marry this game. I, this, I'll say this with a, with a disclaimer. This is my first Call of Duty. So I know there's people out there that are like, no, no, this one sucks, man. But it's my first Call of Duty. And for what I am experiencing, I, I'll be playing this game for a long time. Will I be playing it hardcore for a long time? Probably not. But this is kind of like, I just, there's times I just want to jump in and shoot people. And I'm going to do that with this game easily. Um, so for me, I think there's a lot to like about it. I, I, I'm going to marry it. Paul? You know, I feel like it's a fine th- line between Mary and murder because it's definitely a Mary. But there are times that I just want to rage quit. Yes. Uh, this game pulls it out of me. Yes. There are last few, night. There last are night. few <laughs> games that do it. No, I just got quiet last night because it wasn't fun. When yes, and, but when you get quiet, we when, know what's coming to yeah, and when when you left, like it wasn't like, all right guys, like I'll see you. You're like, all right, I'm leaving. Bye. Bye. Yeah, I was like, all right guys, I'll talk Bye. to you later. Yeah. No, because if you just respawn and the same guy kills you five times, or every time I round that corner and I get sniped. And it, and even though I know he's there and I try to intentionally counter it and I still die, there are those matches where you just start to go, this isn't fun. Why am I doing this? I'm paying money to present myself into video game torture. So yeah. why am I even doing it? But yeah. then the next round, it's pure glee again. So <laughs> I feel like the game is just very manic depressive in that way, right? But it it's is. still yeah. a Mary because I still want to play yeah. it. Yep. It's just, it's not a good marriage is what you're saying. <laughs> no, it's not a good marriage, but it's, it is a marriage. <laughs> you knew what you were getting into yes, though. Yes. Yeah. There were no secrets going into this marriage. For me, I'm going to, I'm going to say marriage as well. I feel like I'm the most cautious marriage out of all of us. Like one of the main reasons is I would rather play this than Warzone. Like, I don't know if it's just Battle Royale or whatnot, but I I love zombies, and I feel like that will always be a fun game mode just to not play all the time, all day, every day. But when when we're tired and multiplayer's not fun, you jump in zombies and, like, you, you just, like, release stress. Like, it is fun and it's casual, and I feel like, like this game does pretty good at a lot of different things and i know the past couple zombies hasn't been great so like i'm glad they started like putting more effort back into it and like they're building like they're working on that as like a like a more serious game mode where it's it's you know they like did a couple nods to like people who love zombies but then they opened it up so it's a little more arcadey so like more people can have fun playing. So three thumbs up for Cold War. Three wedding rings purchased. Wow. <laughs> All right. And now is it worth the price? I think it's a full sixty dollars, right? It's a pricey game. Yeah, it's full it's price. a triple A title. Like that's what you expect. For me, yes. I I mean I'll just say it. For me, yes. I I mean, this is, I've been having more fun in this game than any other $60 game that I've been, you know, I've played in a while. Um, I fully understand that if somebody was playing Call of Duty, what is it, Modern War? What, what's the last one that was released? Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 2, something like that. Like, if you're still all about that game, then maybe Cold War is not worth $60 to you, or maybe it is. Like, I don't know, you know, but for me, I think it's well worth the money. But one thing I think most people know, like, Call of Duty games don't go on sale. Like, you can look up Black Ops 1, and it's like $50. 
So, like, for me, it's, you, you're not really going to find this too much cheaper. Like, if you're playing on PC, you could buy it used later if you're playing on a console with a disc. But if you're just downloading it digitally, you might as well buy it now if you're eventually going to get it. There's no reason to wait, like, a couple months or whatnot. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's a good point. The only reason that I might say it's not worth $60 is simply because the new consoles are out and there are so many good games coming out in the next couple months that I would not sacrifice a game like Outriders to play Call of Duty. I wouldn't sacrifice Cyberpunk to play Call of Duty. But as long as you're able to purchase all those games, then it's definitely worth it. If you're on a very tight budget, maybe you would have to just wait. But if you do spend $60, you're going to get your hours worth. I feel like we've already earned our money's worth and we've only owned the game for how long ago did it release? Like eight uh, days ago or something? Yeah. yeah. And I, I already feel like I have my money's worth out of it. Yeah. Yeah, that's true, too. It's worth it. it. It's just bonus at this point. Exactly. Playing with house money now. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's go to the leaderboard and see where this game stacks up. All right, guys. So, for new listeners, we have on our website, MultiplayerPodcast.com, a leaderboard where we currently, as of recording this, have 33, about to be 34 games ranked in order. Do we agree with all of them over time? Maybe not. We have Overcooked 2 at the bottom of the barrel. I agree with that one. And okay, <laughs> yeah. we agree with that. You one. know, there's a new Overcooked <laughs> out. <laughs> Is it really? Yeah, like an expansion or a three? Uh, I saw it was on the PlayStation Five games. I don't know if it's on Xbox, but I would imagine it probably Done. is. Uh, Sixty dollars. I'm in. <laughs> and so we went through, and over time, we've ranked all of these games. So we have one global leaderboard that we rank every game up against. I'm, I I feel like everyone was pretty positive about this game. Rust is at four. Are we going higher or lower? It's lower than Rust. Okay, good. Oh, very worried about that. Um, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, yeah a, it's definitely not above Rust, it's, but it's... I think it's right below Rust. We have top 10. GTA as five. Paul's not going to allow that. Paul loves GTA five. Yeah. Um I said it would be my number one if it was just Paul. The list. cycle at six, Rainbow Six, Siege at seven, Destiny two at eight. So it's above all that. It's above all those. So Yeah, it's yeah. definitely higher. So I think it is it above or below GTA online? Above. For I'd me. put it right below. Yeah. So Todd, you're the tiebreaker. Like GTA five is fine, but from a multiplayer standpoint, like I would rather hop into Cold War. All right, Paul. GTA just takes too long. It's too much of a commitment Paul, to do GTA. You're going to hate me. The The main reason I'm going to put it above GTA is the loading times. The loading times yeah. in GTA <laughs> yes. Online is awful. It takes... It. It literally took us all... <laughs> 20 minutes to get into the same match and then like the server crashed and i'm pretty sure that day i was just like no i'm done uh yeah. it, it never takes 20 minutes to get in todd it's more like seven minutes <laughs> okay so like, let's not exaggerate it feels like it, 20 minutes it was it was a while all right yeah, my, my 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 thing has always been that gta provides so much more that you can do than cold war can uh, I'm not going to filibuster like Todd did oh. to try to save Halo Reach in in one of our pre- very recent episodes. <laughs> if you want to put it above GTA, that's fine. But I, I think that's a mistake. I think that's a little bit of Cold War still being brand new. I think it's getting a bump. Same way the cycle should not be number six. Yeah. That's a cycle should be way down. That's because it was still new when we reviewed it and we loved it so much. I think this is giving it probably too big of a bump. Let's let's lock it in at five. So right above GTA. I, I concur. 
All right. Well, that wraps up the leaderboard segment for our show today. If you want to view all of our rankings, you can find them on our site, multiplayerpodcast.com. If you're interested in finding out more information about us, you can also go to our website, multiplayerpodcast.com. We also have our Patreon, multiplayersquad.com, and we're on all of the socials, Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram at multiplayerpod. See you guys Thursday. Guys, want to go play some Call of Duty? <laughs> Let's play some GTA Online. Oh, I got to go to bed. Sorry. <laughs> I'll load it for tomorrow I'll, morning. I'll start, <laughs> I was going to say, I'll start loading it now. We can play Set tomorrow. Set your timer. <laughs> I'll meet you guys in 30 minutes. <laughs> I'll go oh, do a man. heist. How bad is that? <laughs>